When it comes to funding tobacco control programs and fighting cancer, Washington apparently falls short. That is according to a new state-by-state -state report released today by the American Cancer Society's Cancer Action Network. We're joined right now by Mary McHale from the American Cancer Society. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So where does Washington compare to other states uh, when it comes to tobacco prevention funding? Well, you know, there's been a lot of progress on implementing legislative solutions designed to uh, prevent, manage, and treat cancer in state legislatures across the country. But our How Do You Measure Up report does show that in a lot of areas, state legislatures are continuing to miss opportunities that would save more lives. And so when it comes to Washington State, <clears throat> I think the area where we could be doing a lot better is in the area of tobacco prevention funding. Yeah, tobacco use is actually the leading cause of preventable death in Washington State, if you didn't know that. So what can people do to improve this? Does it come down to elected leaders doing something? It does come down to our elected leaders taking action. We have a severely underfunded tobacco and what they call a vapor product prevention program here in Washington State. Mm -hmm. um, we used to have a very well-funded program but in the late 2000s, sadly, that program lost most of its funding during the economic downturn when our state had to make some really tough choices. So, so I'm curious, um, vaping has really been on the rise, especially among yeah. the youth. It has. Does that fall under, because I feel like we've had statistics that show that cigarette use is actually coming down, but does vaping fall under tobacco use? It does. It does. It does. Oh, the American good. Cancer Society Cancer Action Network considers e-cigarettes, yeah. or widely known as vaping products, to be tobacco products. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about funding our state tobacco prevention program that would include e-cigarettes and right now we are only at 2.4 percent of the CDC recommended funding level for Washington State mm -hmm. we have a long way to go and our elected leaders can take action yeah uh, they must have thought it was pretty encouraging to see the smoking age move up to 21 though I'd imagine that's a pretty big step it's a huge step and that was a campaign that ACS can worked on for a number of years we are thrilled to see the age go up to 21. It is certainly not the only thing our state needs to do. We need to be funding these prevention programs. So specifically, what, what do you want to see in terms of prevention programs? During this next legislative session, our state legislature should invest at least $16 million a year in tobacco and e-cigarette prevention programs. And mind you, that is only 25% of the CDC recommended level, but it is a huge improvement from where we currently are. So you're saying $16 million, what, where are we at now in terms of the funding? Last year, our state only had about $1.5 million. And it's unfortunate because we have the revenue sources. We have the master settlement agreement, which are dollars that tobacco companies pay to states every year to make up for healthcare costs incurred from their products. And we have tobacco taxes. Last year, our state brought in almost $600 million from those two sources. Mm -hmm. None of it is going to prevention funding, and that's a shame. Wow, okay, that's enlightening. Mary McHale with the American Cancer Society, thanks for being here. That's interesting. Thank you Appreciate so much for having me. Watch for it. Yeah. Yeah.